In this video, we'll write the balanced net ionic equation for Na3PO4 plus CaCl2. This is sodium phosphate, this is calcium chloride. So the first thing we need to do is balance the molecular equation. As we look at the molecular equation, it looks like we'll need to put a three here to balance the calcium. So now I have three calcium atoms and three calciums here. But now I have three times two, six chlorines. Let's put a six in front of this. And now I have six sodiums. I'm going to put a two here. Sodiums are balanced. I have two phosphates here, two times this phosphate. So that's the balanced equation. If you need help balancing this equation, there's a link in the description on a more full explanation of how I balanced that. So we have our balanced molecular equation. Now we need to write the states for each one of the substances. So it's helpful to know the solubility rules. For example, sodium compounds they're almost always soluble. So for the sodium phosphate, that Na3PO4, we can write AQ for aqueous. It's going to dissolve in water. Calcium compounds, and especially chlorine compounds, they're soluble as well. So calcium chloride, that's going to be aqueous. It'll dissolve in water, split apart into its ions. Sodium compounds and chlorine with chlorides, very soluble, aqueous. Calcium phosphate, if you know that phosphates in general are insoluble, you'd know that this is going to be a solid. That S for solid, it means it's insoluble, and it will sink to the bottom of the test tube. In fact, when these two compounds react, this will be a precipitate. If you didn't know that, you could look this up on a solubility table as well, if you're allowed to use one. Solubility table, here's calcium, here's the phosphate. So we go over and down. You see that I? That means calcium phosphate is insoluble. So now we know the states. At this point, we can split the strong electrolytes into their ions, and that's going to give us the complete ionic equation. Sometimes it's called the total ionic equation. So sodium is in group one on the periodic table. It'll have a one plus charge. Phosphate ion is always three minus. So we write Na plus for the sodium ion, and I'll write aqueous at the end. We have two times three, six sodium ions, plus the phosphate ion, that PO4, three minus. We have two phosphate ions, so put a two there. Plus calcium is in group two, two plus, and we said the chloride negative there. So we have Ca2 plus, and that coefficient of three means we have three of those plus the chloride ion, that's Cl minus, we have three times two, six of those. So those are the reactants. The products, we have the NaCl plus and a minus. So we have Na plus, we have six sodium ions plus six chloride ions. And then the calcium phosphate has a solid. So in net ionic equations, we don't split solids apart. So we're just going to write Ca3, that PO4 too. So these are the products. Now we can cross out spectator ions. They appear on both sides of the total, our complete ionic equation. In essence, they haven't changed. So we're not really interested in them. I have six sodium ions here in the reactants and six in the products. And cross those out. Looks like I have six chloride ions here, and then in the products, six chloride ions, cross them out. But everything else is unique, and that makes the net ionic equation. Two phosphate ions, three calcium ions, and then our calcium phosphate. So let me clean this up. I'll add the states in, and then we'll have our net ionic equation for Na3PO4 plus CaCl2, sodium phosphate plus calcium chloride. So this is the net ionic equation for Na3PO4 plus CaCl2. And this is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.